I'm going to show you how to install a wardrobe insert unit into an existing wardrobe. The tools I need for this, saw horses to cut my shelf, measuring gear, I'll need power tools, safety gear which is paramount on anything that you're doing DIY, I'll need fixings, pipe cutter and brackets. I'll also need the wardrobe insert units uh, which I have two of and we're going to start clearing out this and put them into the wardrobe. Now that the wardrobe's empty, uh, the first step is to measure the inserts so we know how much of our skirting to cut out at the back so the units sit flush with the back wall. Okay, so the measurement's 610, so what we need to do is measure out from the skirt on the side of the cupboard, measure 610 out, and then mark the skirt so we can make the cut. So now I've made the mark on the skirt, I'm just going to cut it out using the multi tool. Okay, now I've made the cut in the skirt, I'm just going to use my pry bar and my hammer to take the skirt off. Just make sure you look for where the stud is so you don't damage the plaster behind. Now I've removed the skirt, I'm just going to remove the nails from underneath. Now we're going to put our first wardrobe insert unit into this hole and then we'll repeat the process with the other unit. The next step is to put our shelf in. The shelf's going to sit on top of this unit and be supported with cleats at the back and at the side. So I'm going to measure the, and cut to length the shelf now using my circular saw. So now that I've marked the melamine, it's a great idea to put a piece of tape over the top to avoid chipping the surface with the blade. Using a paper tape is great because you can still see the mark through the tape. Then you just need to use a square to make sure that you get a nice crisp edge. Okay, so now that we've cut our shelf to length, we're going to install our cleats. To do this, we just measure from the base of the cabinet to the top, because the shelf will be sitting on top of the cabinet, and transfer those measurements over to the wall. We'll do our end cleat first, and then we'll run the back cleat from the same height as that cleat straight through to the top of this unit. So now that we've got the height for the cleat, we need to measure the depth of the wardrobe so we can transfer the length onto our piece of timber and then make the cut. It's important when fixing your cleat to the wall that you know where your studs are. I know where they are in this cupboard, but if you don't, then a really good idea is to get yourself a stud finder. All you do, pop it on the wall and move it across until you get an indicator that there's a stub behind. Just mark the spot and then drill and screw into that. Now that I marked my cleat where the screws are going to go, I'm just going to pre-drill and then we'll screw it onto the wall. Okay, so now that we've fixed that cleat, all we need to do is measure the distance between the side of this cupboard and the edge of this cleat and cut to size the next one. Whenever you're cutting a piece of timber to length, make sure that you cut both ends of the timber so that they're square, so they fit nice and snug up against whatever you're fitting it to. I'm just going to pre-drill and then we'll screw it onto the wall. It's really important that the back cleat is level, otherwise your shelf is going to be out. Now that the cleats are in position and we've checked that they're level, we're just going to pop our shelf on top and make sure that it fits. So now that the shelf's in, we're just going to put some screws through the top into the cabinets to secure it in place, just in case it pulls forward. So now that the shelf's in, we're going to measure and cut our rail to hang our clothes from. A couple of things to think about when you're doing that is how deep your coat hangers are going to be. So you want to make sure that your rail's at a, at a distance back, that your coat hangers aren't going to protrude through the front of the cupboard, and also that they're not going to touch the back. So somewhere around the middle, um, in this case, will be fine. If your cupboard's deeper, then obviously you've got a bit more room to play with. So we're going to use end rail fitters. So they fit over the end of the rail, and they hang from the shelf underneath. Let's measure and cut this rail to size and then we can hang it. When using the end caps for your rails, you need to cut the rail 10mm short of the overall length because it sits inside of your end cap which tapers off at the end. When you go to cut the rail, it's a good idea to use some tape of a brighter colour because the lead on the silver is hard to see. 
To cut the rail, I'm going to use a pipe cutter. The way a pipe cutter works is that there's a rolling cutting blade at the top and two rolling discs at the bottom. All you do is put it on to the pipe, a quarter turn tight with the knob at the back, and then just rotate it around the pipe. Each rotation around the pipe, you just need to do another quarter turn and keep going until it cuts right through. Okay, now that we've cut the rail, all we need to do is hang it. So all we've done is marked out the front of our bracket at each end. So we've got them level, so you're not gonna have some of your clothes at the front of your cupboard and some at the back. And then all we're gonna do is put two screws up through the shelf and hang the rail. Now that the rail is in, that's it, job's done. Really easy to do, have a crack yourself.